Morning. Quick one this morning. Um, we're up in the workshop. Uh, just a quick update of what's happening. I'll just flip the camera around. Transport the van. Uh, what, this a couple of weeks ago, it's got a damaged bumper. So we've got a new bumper to put on for a new light in it. Nice thing. Nice little thing. Uh, we've done a fuel and oil service on it. It's really low on the miles, 30,000. Uh, on a 19 plate. Oh, get on here. Cleans the whistle, really. A few dints and dongs and scratches on it. But it's a work van. Um, but the price we put it up for, you could get a full race beer on it and still have a tidy van at Andy Money. Hi, welcome, morning to Hardy Classics and today I want to show you something um, that every transit owner should know about transit timing belts. So basically at Hardy Classics we do buy and sell a few modern commercials, it subsidises the business and helps us uh, get a new customer base. Um, one of the most popular vehicles on the, the road at the minute is the Ford Transit pickup and to me it's really gone back, it hasn't gone forward and the reason it's gone back is with this silly wet belt, timing belt that they use. We've got one here on the ramp, I'm going to flick the camera around, there you go, uh, we've just sold that to a customer, I think it's got around about 69,000 miles to 70,000 miles and I don't know what the Ford recommendation is for these, I think it's a hundred thousand, but again, I might be wrong. Um, but if you've got a Ford Transit with a two litre Ecotec engine in, get your timing belt changed. Uh, it's a costly job because it takes a full day to do, and you've got to replace the sump and the timing cover at the same time. So there's a couple of bits and bobs to do, but it really is worth it. Uh, and you can't tell People say, you can tell when you drain the oil because there's fragments of belt in it. You can't because the sump plug is higher in the sump than the bottom of the sump. So all the fragments of the belt lie in the bottom. So I'm just going to get this belt here and I'm going to show you what I mean. So there's the belt. And if you can see on the belt, and you see it should be a, a little a brown colour. And there's bits missing off it. And then bits missing off it. I need a bit better picture there. Them little bits missing off it. Get into your oil pump and starve your engine of oil. And just to remember this belt, when it runs in your engine, it doesn't run on a tensioner pulley. It runs on the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. It runs on this skid you on it here so instead of running on a on a ball race on a ball bearing like a norman timer belt would do it skids against this so if you're running short of oil all it'll do is overheat and shred the belt and cause well unlimited damage to your engine so ford i think you've definitely got it wrong with that one right so brighton well <laughs> we did brighton like i say everybody knows we did it because it's on the video uh, broke down about five times and one of the problems was the clutch so we've got the car uh, in the workshops and we've pulled the gearbox out and I want to show you why I think we have the problems with the clutch we've took the gearbox out of the car so you can see the gearbox is out there prop shaft and we've got it on the bench over here so there's the actual cone clutch there and you can see how worn down to the rivets it is it's a leather cone clutch and it's really worn and it's been pressing against the flywheel there causing friction so we made the run but just so we need a new lining on that clutch so i'm not sure what to do i've talked to a few people and a few people say use a modern lining and a few people say go back to the old leather so i've tried the leather so i'm gonna go and get a new 
Uh, lining on that, and it'll be a modern type lining, I think. I'm going to try that. We've had some bad weather recently. I don't know if you can see on our CCTV footage, but next door's shed actually blew off the ground from their garden over our fence and landed perfectly in our garden. So for now, we've got a new shed. Well, until they come pick it up. And I tell you what, it's quite heavy. Weird weather at the moment. Morning. Welcome to Hardy Classics. And for once, it's a nice morning. I can hear the birds singing. It's pretty mild, so that's a good start. And we're nearly at the end of January. Um, to be fair, January, I ain't been up to a lot. Uh, I've had COVID, so I've been a bit out of fettle, but I'm back now. Um, I'm just gonna flick the camera around and talk to you about commercial vehicles. Right, there you have it. Commercial vehicles, or vans. One or two in here. Spin the camera around. One or two more down there. And there's one or two more up the top. Right, so without waffling on a bit too much, because I don't want to do that. Commercial vehicles. Why have I got a yard full of commercial vehicles? Well, I'm going to tell you why. I used to sell commercial vehicles for a living. I used to sell vans, pickups, wagons for a living. What, 25 years ago, something like that? Maybe 30 years ago? Um, I mean, I was selling cars before I was 17, before I had a driving license. I used to sell cars with a, a lad who had a driving license. We used to go to the auctions, buy them, do them up, stick them on the corner and put them up for sale. So it's nothing new to me. Um, but the reason I started back with the vans is I couldn't buy any vans. Uh, you'll all know I've got a construction company as well as a classic cars, which is really me being business. Um, and I struggle to buy second-hand commercials. Uh, even new ones were a nightmare. I mean, I, 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 like I say, I'm gonna show you my Defender van in a minute, but I used to buy, you know, four or five-year-old vans, pickups or whatever. And the mileages, the mileages on them were like 120,000, 130,000. They've had a life before you get them. So I just thought to myself, I'm gonna go out there I'm not going to go daft, I'm going to buy, you know, a dozen. A dozen low mileage, one owner, ex-council, ex-leasing company, whatever, just one owner, low mileage, vans. And I have. And we've done all right. We've been selling one or two. I'm not making a fortune out of them. I'm putting a little bit on them. I'm putting them through the workshops so everything's checked out before they go out, like, like the brakes and tyres and all that rubbish. So all that's sorted out. Um and it's doing all right because there's, there's a market out there for it. But low mileage, one owner, vans. You can't get them. You can't get them. Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and all that is flooded with vans. There's loads of them on there. But when you ring up and say, how many owners is that? Oh, tag three. What's the mileage? Oh, 126,000. So the, the stacks of stuff out there. But like I say, whether it's any good or not, it's a different matter. Anyway... Back on to what's been happening. The Classics is really quiet at the minute. Um, I haven't bought anything else. I haven't sold anything. I've had one or two inquiries, but like I say, this month I've been out of fettle myself. So hopefully now, now that the weather's going to start, looks like it's going to start in turn. It's the first decent day we've had. Um, we'll start and push that with a bit more advertising and stuff. Um, what else has been happening? We've been cracking on with a few... Jobs in the workshop that we've had to do. We've done the brakes on the Chevrolet pickup. We've dropped back on the bubble car project. Um, so we're cracking on with stuff like that. Um, and my Defender van's arrived, finally, after two years waiting. I have my Defender van. And there it is. The Defender 90, short wheel base commercial that I've waited two years for. And people will be saying, two years I've seen loads of those. Well, I don't think you have. You might have saw a new Defender 90 with seats in the back. And this bit here, glass. But I haven't seen a handful of commercials. And to be truthful, my intention was when I got it, after the wait and the massive price increases that have happened, that was just going to sell it but as you can see 
I fell in love with it and I put the stickers on, so that's not going to happen. Right, I'll show you around it quickly. So, it's a Defender 90 hard top in blue with a white roof. I specced it with that and white steel wheels. Now, a lot of people out there with these have got them all blinged up and you know, they've got boxes on the side and big alloy wheels. I wanted this to look like an old Defender. I know it doesn't look like an old Defender, but if you know what I mean, I wanted it to have the same sort of character as a proper, proper four wheel drive. So I think it has, I think it has. Um, spare wheel on the back there. So I did get a few bits of accessories on it, but not many. I mean, I got a deployable tow bar, um, a jump seat in the middle, which I'll show you a little extra seat. Um, but basically in the back, it's a van. Now I also find it's very strange that in a van, they've got uh, short wheel base station wagon door cards. So you would have thought this would have just been, you know, plain uh, plastic, but it's not. So what do I think of it? I think it's great. Uh, a lot bigger than I thought in the back. And you've got this little handy storage thing in the back here. Uh, it's not very big, but I can get my jump pack in, jack, so I'm moving vehicles about. Uh, you can deploy the tow bar from here. So I'll just show you how that works. Um, I put them there, I think. Uh, I think the engine's got to be started, so I won't show you how that works. But there's loads of storage, little storage pockets and bits and bobs on it. I'm really, really impressed with it, actually. Let me show you inside. Right, we're in. So, there you have it, inside. Three seats, although I very much doubt I would carry anything more than a skinny child. Again, I love the doors with the rivets. Well, limitation rivets, aren't they? On here and it's just it's just it's meant to look what it is like a defender loads of storage and bits and bobs grab rails to hold on if you're going down hills right i'll get in um pretty basic inside you might say until you fire it up and when you do fire it up which i'm going to do now I can't believe how quiet this vehicle is. It's a three litre diesel, um, straight six, the same engine that goes in the, the Range Rovers, uh, well, some of the Range Rovers. I think it's a D250, this one. So it's 250 horsepower. Um, really, really quiet uh, and really quick. It's got a sport mode on the gearbox, which I tried out yesterday, and I couldn't believe how quick it is. I, my other car that I run uh, is a V8 Autobiography diesel Range Rover, and again, that's a quick thing for a V8 diesel, but this is this is pretty much up there. Um, like I say, it's got this screen inside, which I'll show you now. It's touch screen affair here. If you touch it, it tells you everything, what you, you, you need to do here. It's got all sorts of gizmos and gadgets. Um, the one annoying thing it has got on it is this this button here, which is like a lane. I'll press it, I'll show you. If you press it, it's sort of uh, how you drive. So it's like a high safety, custom safety, or low. So basically, it's if you're driving it in high. Uh, it's got safety features, like I say, like the lane protection thing, so you get next to the white line and it pulls you back, well, which I don't really like. Uh, you go over 70 mile an hour and it's bleeping and telling you to slow down, so I press that and it takes that off. But if you don't do that, every time you get in the Jeep, it'll automatically go into high. So uh, that's, that's probably the most annoying thing 
about it. And the other annoying thing, which I don't like, is the stop start technology. And that's that button. So if you press that, now it's off. So with them two buttons off, uh, I think it's, um, I think it's more usable myself. Um, so you've got heated seats, you turn them up or down, and that's just your temperature control on there. Um, air conditioning. There's plenty of USB sockets. The seat actually, when I first got in, I thought it hasn't got any cup holders, but this bump seat here, if you pull this lever here, comes down and you've got a couple of cup holders, something to put your phone on, uh, more USB charging points than you can shake a stick at. It seems to have a lot of USB charging points on this truck and I'm not so sure why it has so many to be fair. Um, but no, it's, it's impressing me, I tell you. Really, really is impressing me. Um, I won't like to say my intention was buy it and sell it straight away, but I kept it a day, and after one day the stickers went in, I thought, I ain't selling this, I'm keeping it. And I'm actually, next week, uh, I was talking to the sales lady at Stratstone, uh, there's still a, just under a two year waiting list. I think I'm actually gonna order another one for the next two years when this one's um, done its bits and bobs. I haven't toured with it yet, so I don't know what it's gonna tow like. Um, so plenty of features to help you when you're towing. So it should tow all right, and the engine's definitely powerful enough to tow. Um, whether it's, a decent ride with a trailer or not a different thing because this one I've got here um, aspect with coil suspension so it hasn't got air suspension it's got the coil suspension so it could be a little bit bumpy another useful feature it's got it's got a million cameras it's got this mirror here and obviously you can see out the back when your bump seat's down but Really, all you want to see is that tyre. If you flick the switch, it's a camera. And it's just crystal clear. There you go. And it seems to have an abundance of cameras on it all over, to be fair. Um, we'll put them there. Press that. There's cameras and all the different views. So it's got plenty of gadgets on it. Um, another gadget which it has, which I've found quite interesting is the uh, app on your phone so so saleswoman in the uh, in the garage says can I have your phone I said yeah well you know my phone why do you want my phone she said oh it's to set your car up and I'm like set my car up what do you mean set my car up she said oh it's to set the app on your car so I gave her my phone and she set this app up on my phone so Basically, if your car's outside, which you can do on my Range Rover anyway off the key, but you can do it off your phone on this thing, you can start your car up, you can lock your car, you can unlock your car, you can put your lights on, you can see how much fuel you've got in your car, uh, you can track your car, it's fitted with a tracker. Uh, if your car, if you go to a car park and you lose your car, you can talk to your phone and it'll find your car. Uh, so. It's got some really useful bits of technology on, but again, um, in the big picture, in the longevity of of them, I don't know. You know, if if it goes wrong, um, a couple of friends have got these, and the, and the, they've had a couple of problems with them. Um, so I, I don't know. I'll just try it. But first impressions, I'm a hundred percent pleased with it. It's everything that I wanted it to be. Uh, I wanted the rough, tough looking Defender van and that's where it is. Whether it stands the test of time or not, I don't know, but it certainly looks the part. Um, the girl in the showroom was ever so pleased with herself when, when we got this because she said, I must have sold hundreds of uh, blacked out winded, big fat wheels, side steps, 90 Defenders. She said, this one looks like a proper old one, so I was pretty chuffed for that. 
so there you have it that's where we are for now a uh, little catch up uh, what else has been happening uh, in the construction job we've bought another hot box wagon so that's five now we're running um, keeping the potholes filled in the roads are absolutely atrocious and it doesn't matter where you go whether you're down south whether you're up north whether you're on the east or the west the roads are absolutely shot so we are spending a lot of time filling holes in um, we've also bought another wagon for the specialist surfacing team that we have uh, we're, we're currently running a little seven and a half ton wagon uh, which was really up to capacity so we've opted for a, an a 18 ton um, same make Iveco we like the wagons um, not everybody's cup of tea but we like them triple drop side 28 foot long uh, nice ton and a half lift uh, ton and a half tail lift on the rear to get the barrows and the bobcat on the back so we'll sort we're sort of getting ready for this year's season and hopefully we'll be busy with that.